Welcome back guys to another video. And what I've got for you today is as you can see behind me, completely not performance related, uh, but they're a very popular car and they're a very good car. So um, got the opportun opportunity to video one for the channel for you guys to see. So we thought, yeah, why not? Let's take it up. It's a Range Rover Evoque. It's the D150, so it's like the entry level sort of Evoque, but they still come with like a very decent spec and they're a very, as you can see, a very decent looking car. So what we'll do is we'll go for a little walk around the uh, and then the interior features and then just a little drive, nothing obviously to, uh, no performance runs or nothing, but uh, yeah, just so you guys can have a check it out. If you're in the market for one, if you're thinking about buying one or anything, uh, uh, we'll go through a, bit, a couple of bits and bobs. So subscribe to our YouTube channel, Performance Lifestyles. Check us out on Instagram, performance underscore lifestyles. And we're on Facebook as well, Performance Lifestyles. Check it out, have a look. And um, we've got plenty of videos uploaded and we've got plenty of content to come. If you'd like your car featured on our channel, drop us an email, pflifestyle at hotmail.com and we will be more than happy to accommodate. But for today, we've got this Evoke, so check it out. So here it is. Range Rover Evoque R Dynamic D150 2 litre turbo diesel uh, automatic. I think they all are automatic cars. And just check it out, it's quite a nice, snazzy looking car to be fair. It's not really my cup of tea or anything, but it's a, it's a beautiful car. I like the way the little grille is. The lower grille's a very similar sort of pattern but smaller. And then it's got rose gold sort of inserts here and there. It reminds me of a uh, Apple iPhone. And again, rose gold vents here rose gold on the side here and as you can see these this is this comes with the smaller wheels i believe they are 17s you do get these with the bigger 19s and 20s even with the smaller low profile tires but uh, like i said this is quite it's like an entry sort of level one so but what a it's a beautiful looking car to be fair led full led headlights with the actual drl as well uh, by LEDs, is that what they're called nowadays? By LEDs or something? So, onto the back of it, as you can see, Evoke D150. It's like a gunmetal sort of dark greyish Range Rover badge on the back, and obviously the Land Rover. And they've got like this funky style diffuser on the back, and again, rose gold sort of uh, inserts on above these probably fake vents. It's a very nice, snazzy, snazzy looking car, to be fair. And check this out, this feature actually quite... Now, this one feature I actually quite like about this car is when you unlock the car, the door handles just pop out. Well, the driver's one does, but then when you double click it, the rest of them pop out, so they kind of like stick out from the door, but when it's all locked up, it's like a flush sort of finish quite a snazzy snazzy sort of feature yeah this one doesn't have the pan roof but I think it's the actual black and gold and black wheels suits it quite quite well quite well I quite like the front end on it it's quite an aggressive sort of looking front end so onto the inside of it you first introduced with this are dynamic kick plates and this whole actual dashboard funky sort of steering wheel with these controls i'll go through them in a second when i turn the car on and then you've got your big touch screen uh, display here which you do get your sat nav and everything on uh, and then the gear knob actually reminds me of a bmw so i'm not too sure if they're in conjunction with bmw or not um, but that's what it is sir if we start the car up So now this, this is also a very, very good feature, I think, on these cars. Now, as you can see here, this is actually the temperature uh, that's set over here. But now, if I was to push that in, it's automatically converted to controlling the heated seats. Push it in again, and it's back to the temperature. Now, another feature that button actually has is when you press this button here, you can adjust how the writing all changes there. And you can actually adjust what mode driving mode you're in. So, uh, and that shows up on the display there. So uh, gravel, mud ruts, sand, uh, yeah, grass, gravel, snow, auto terrain. And then it's got comfort and economical mode. 
So the eco mode actually does show you at the bottom here sometimes when you're driving, it shows up as how economical you've been driving. Um, so you push that again, it goes back into normal settings. And then again, this side, the button here, push that and it's the actual fan speed. Because it's all a touch screeny sort of pad going on here, I think it's a very, very good sort of uh, a feature. Now, this is the buttons on the steering wheel that I was talking about. These are, uh, they're blinking on the camera, but obviously, because they have LED lights behind them. Now, these, you can control the volume by just doing this on there. And you can hear the volume going up. If you have a helicopter. Or you can turn it backwards, which is quite a snazzy thing. Or you can just press the uh, minus and plus buttons there. But if you want to, you know, if you've got to impress somebody, just uh, spin it around. It's a bit long-winded, but it is there. And then you've got your voice command and stuff buttons here at the bottom. Uh, and obviously your menu button there, which probably does something yet. Yeah, driver assist, you can, yeah, you can just do bits and bobs through there. Um, okay, and then on this side, you've got your cruise control and your speed limit button. So you can set it, resume it, cancel it, delay it. And the, or, the lane assist. So this actually, with some cars, it's like on the um, Civic Type R FK2 that we've got a video up from last week. They did have a feature where the lane assist will only beep at you when you're kind of like drifting away. But on this car, they, they actually, it pulls you back in. So it can be a little bit of a, a bit of a scary moment if you're not expecting it, but it does happen. And it's, it's quite a safety feature, I suppose. So it's there and it's good. And like I said, for a quite a basic sort of spec car, it's, it's still a very well-specced car. You know, it's, it's, they're still priced. I mean, what's 2020 sort of model? I'm guessing this was around 40,000 pounds plus new. And, and still, they're still over 30, 32, 33,000 pounds as they are now to buy. And for that sort of money, I know you can buy something older with a better spec, but then you will be looking at three litre diesels, uh, your German equivalent, should I say, three litre diesels. And they're a good car again, but if you want a bit of economy as well, these are probably a good thing. And let's be honest, these were quite a girly car. Um, so most of, most of the people that drive these are females. And I can see why. They, they are a very snazzy, yet the simple, the sleek, sort of slick sort of cars. They've got a nice, nice sort of interior, nice exterior. And they actually do drive quite nice as well. So you've got best of both worlds really if you're not after power and speed and stuff and even on the dashboard here you can see it's got like a cr chrome gloss sort of finish on the front here over here again and again this is all a touchscreen thing you can even see like reverse camera uh, there you go which is again I think it's quite a decent sort of feature and as mentioned the screen is touchscreen uh, sorry it's a display in the middle there's the actual features for how efficiently I've been driving at the minute they're not showing anything fuel gauge on this side temperature on this side and it also does show you sort of like a compass in the middle here because we've got to remember it is still a four-wheel drive range rover in essence so and they are renowned for how good they handle off-road majority of these cars have never seen any sort of dirt road any sort of off-road uh, driving but it's got the capability to take you off-road if you ever need to the ones with the higher spec and the smaller, uh, sorry, the bigger wheels, lower tyres probably won't perform as well. But something like this with bigger tyres, you know you've got no danger of scuffing your wheels or nothing. So it's, it's a very good off-road car. At the end of it, like I said, it's still a Range Rover. So another feature is where you can actually control. Um, I understand. Okay, low traction launch. You can do bits and bobs with it there. Uh, I'm not sure what that actual entails. And then you've got off-road information as well. It just shows you there what sort of power, uh, where the power's been distributed to uh, front wheels, rear wheels. And you've also got like a little compass here. I'm parked very parallel at the moment. It's, it's, uh, you can, but the thing is when you are, I've actually tried it earlier on. And uh, when you're uh, parked at a bit of a slope, it actually tells you. And uh, so it's, a, it's actually a good feature, especially if you're off-road. So you need to know exactly what sort of angle you're at. And this is, this is the one. Uh, again, this is just your eco and all the rest of the modes that we were going through on the screen here. It just shows you what you're doing. So, uh, right, okay. Now, space. 
especially for rear seat passengers. I think they're quite well sort of, uh, you've got plenty of space here inside. And from what I've actually read up is the, the actual size of this car is exactly the same as the, uh, the earlier, because they started off in 2011, but the size is exactly the same of the actual car, but the wheelbase is, well, in between the two wheels, there's more space because they've moved the wheels slightly further out. So in, that's enabled them to give plenty of leg room for the passengers. I mean, this has got like a, um, like a storage thing here, but yeah, you've still got plenty of space here and it's quite a comfortable sort of ride for the passengers as well. You don't want to be cramped up and stuff. You can comfortably, I'd say, seat three people in the back here, decent sized people. Uh, or if you've got kids, obviously you can chuck however many you want in the back, but yeah, there's, there's plenty of space for plenty of space for your passengers so you've got nothing to worry about there so if you are thinking about buying an evoke it's got plenty of space in the back so storage storage on these cars plenty there's ample amounts of storage they've got obviously your normal usual cup holders over here which this thing slides forward individual armrests as well so you can do one at a time and then obviously you've got your storage underneath here the usual you know glove box that's got plenty of space in it and the ones that the feature that i found quite snazzy was you've got this little gap over here so you can store bits on the side here over there if you if you're a forgetful sort of person i'd say you might actually end up leaving your wallet or something here in this compartment and then you'll you will forget about it because if you forget that compartment so especially if it's a new car for you you'll be like scratching your head thinking hey where did i leave my wallet but yeah storage there the door obviously pockets are quite a decent size there's a bit of a thingy the owner's stuff in here and the boot the boot is actually good enough for 420 liters um so you could picture that with how many coke bottles you could fit in there or water bottles even coke's no good for you um so yeah you can see it's quite plenty of size in there you could fit suitcases in there push chairs and bodies and whatever else you want to fit in there plenty of space nothing to worry about there and in general, yeah, seating's good, plenty of space for your passengers, plenty of space for, your, for yourself and stuff, some decent mod cons in these cars. And like I said, this was like an entry-level one, but it's still quite a well-specced sort of car. You wouldn't really get these sort of features in any of the rivals unless you're talking more money and uh, a higher spec as such. So, because they won't come with these sort of things as on a, the basic entry-level models. And then the drive on it, which is what we'll go through next, uh, and you'll know just so to give you feedback as to what it drives like. I think it drives very nice. I've driven this car for about <clears throat> 20 to 30 odd miles and I think it drives quite nice for a, you know, you sit quite high up and yeah, just the whole thing's quite nice. So yeah, we'll go through that on the actual drive. So we'll catch you on that. Right, so onto the drive of this Range Rover Evoque. The first thing you notice when you're driving it is you sit quite high up coming from driving a car obviously uh, yeah you sit quite high up but it's a very comfortable and smooth sort of drive to it it's it's actually quite an impressive drive and at the end of the day I know it's the baby model and it's the you know it's the it's the Evoque and not the sports and all well, the other ones and velours and stuff that you get nowadays but it still drives very very nice it's it does everything you need it to do. And like I mentioned, there's plenty ample amounts of room inside the car, enough storage compartments for your bits and bobs that generally people like to chuck into their car, even though there's no need for them. There's plenty of space for them sort of bits and bobs. And what more do you want? If you're not really into getting something with big power or anything, you know, performance related, and you want something spacious, something that looks good, um, and I say a Range Rover Evoque is probably a decent car. Like I said, it's not my sort of, uh, my cup of tea. But if you're a, more so if you're a female, because let's be honest, like I mentioned before, a lot of drivers, people who own these cars are women and that's generally who you see driving them around. But they're still a very, very good car. It's got four electric windows, obviously all your multifunction controls here. The gear knob reminds me of a BMW automatic box. And you can, if you need to you can actually take it off-road and i'm more than confident to to say that it will perform very very well off-road like i mentioned it's still a four-wheel drive range rover land rover thing so it's it's got the heritage it's got the backing of 
the bigger cars as well. So I'm sure the four wheel drive system will be very similar to them. The other thing that was actually quite, um, I was quite interested in actually feel, just, just to see how it actually drives like is the gearbox on it. Oh, oh that was a beauty, 911 turbo, 992. Um, but no, that's not this car, that's that car I drove past, obviously. Um, is this car comes with a nine speed gearbox. Now, I've never driven a car with a nine speed box. I think sevens and eights, yes. But a nine speed gearbox, and it's also got flappy paddles on it. Surprisingly, I will, it, is, it changes gear quite quick, considering the nature of the car and stuff. I wouldn't expect it like, you know, very sharp sort of uh, gear chain, but it's actually quite quite sharp. I was expecting it to be very sluggish and very, but even if you're driving it around normal and it's, oh, we've got a horse. Let's slow down. So if you ever see a horse on your travels, people, just uh, give them plenty of room. Don't rev your engines and just let them go past. That's my bit of advice to you. You see idiots, honestly, they just completely and utterly fly past, fly past, and it's just this, yeah, it's not, it's not good. It scares the living daylights out of them. Um, but yeah, back to the Evoke. So the actual um, gear change, I'd say, is, is very good. I mean, I'll put it into manual mode now. And it's dropped a gear. <laughs> you get a little bit of, uh, like a, a boat sort of feeling, you get like a bit of wallowing, but the thing is, because the suspension is quite high, well, the car sits quite high, so the suspension is soft as well, hence why they're very comfortable, refined sort of car. I believe they don't come with adaptive suspension uh, like some cars, so you get that one setting and that is it, but you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong, like I said, if you're after a car, looks decent, half decent spec, you know, it's, it's new, it's good, it's nice, practical, comfortable, spacious, reliable, I think. Then yeah, the Evoke. If you've considering one, never had one before, they're worth a shout. And even the size of the car is, uh, it's obviously bigger than a normal car and you do sit a lot higher up, like I've mentioned uh, before, but it's not a massive car. It will prob probably be a very big jump for somebody who's come from, say, the size of a Corsa or a Fiesta. But if you're used to driving biggish cars and you jump into one of these, you know, four by four, mini four by four things, then it, it will, uh, it's not a massive, it's not a massive thing. They're, you know, they don't take up a huge amount of space on the roads. And even though it's not my type of car, but I think they still have a very good, very good look to them. Especially these newer ones. The earlier ones, uh, some of them did look a bit sketchy and a bit ropey. And the convertible one was just a massive no-no. Now, why would anybody in their right frame of mind make a convertible out of a Range Rover Evoque is beyond me. It was like the most ugliest looking car to look at. It was almost on level par with like one of them Chryslers, was it the PT Cruiser? And somebody decided to make a convertible of an already very ugly car. And the Evoke, the, the earlier ones, convertible ones, were the same. They were just horrible. Honestly, they were horrible. Uh, but yeah, coming onto one of these sort of things, and they're a massive step. These are, these are a very nice looking car. Very nice looking. And they're common as well. There's a lot of them out there. So you could generally gauge popularity and stuff from just how many cars there are on the road and uh, how many of a certain type of car there are on the road. And there's plenty of evokes. You drive around now. If you used to jump into your car now, drive around whatever area you're from for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I can guarantee you, you're gonna bump, you're gonna see, not bump, I hope you don't bump into them, but yeah, you're going to see at least a few, a handful of Range Rover evokes because they are everywhere and just goes to show how popular they are and how good they are. So my verdict on the Range Rover Evoque is if you are looking to buy one, a mini four x four thing, and you've got a budget of around this sort of money to spend, you know, anything 20K plus, then the Evoque 
definitely give it a try. Definitely give it a try, especially more so if you're a lady. Uh, yeah, give it a try. Because they're a very nice car, spacious, practical, reliable, and a good looking car. So yeah, go for it if you're after one. And on that note, I'm going to conclude the video for today. Uh, just a brief one, because I'm not really too sure what else to discuss about this car. It's, it's a beautiful car, good car, good looking car, drives nice and uh, everything does everything it's supposed to do. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Performance Lifestyles. Check us out on Instagram as well, performance underscore lifestyles. And check us out on, on Facebook as well, Performance Lifestyles. We've got uh, plenty of videos uploaded already and we have got plenty of videos to come. And on a side note, if you'd like your car featured on our channel, drop us an email, pflifestyle at hotmail.com and we will be more than happy to accommodate, uh, get your car on the channel and uh, yeah, and yeah, just get it out there. So again, thank you very much for watching the video guys. As per usual, stay safe and we will catch you on the next video.